Hey everyone, in this tutorial we're going to cover the very basics of using the WP Bakery page builder. This video will be very useful for those who have just installed WP Bakery for the first time or maybe those who are planning to do so in the future. Before we check out the editors, let's start with some general settings you should know. You will find the WP Bakery global settings here on the left side menu in your WordPress dashboard. Here in the general settings, you'll see the auto save option, which is disabled by default, but I'd highly suggest enabling it. This means you won't have to click the save button when you make changes and customize the page. All changes will be saved automatically and you'll see the preview instantly. Next, let's go to the role manager and here you can either allow or restrict access to WP Bakery for different user roles. I'm logged in as an administrator, so I'll make sure I have enabled WP Bakery for posts and pages. And if you have other post types like WooCommerce products, for example, those will also show up here. Now save changes and you're ready to start using WP Bakery. To create a new page with WP Bakery, go to pages, click on add new page. And as you can see, you have the option to use the front end and the back end editor. Today, I'll show you the front end editor, but note that you have the option to choose or use both. This is the blank page wizard where you can choose if you want to build a page with your theme default layout, which will be a blank page with your team's header and footer, or you can go with a completely blank page. I have the visual composer starter theme activated now. So if we choose the theme layout option, this is how it will look and you can add content here in the middle. If you want to go with the blank page option, you can change that at any time here in the page settings. Now here at the top, you see the WP Bakery navigation bar, which has the add element button here, which will open the element library. You're able to choose between over 50 content elements that you can use to build your site. There are different types of elements like content, social, and structure, so it's easier to find the element you're looking for. You can also use the search bar, like typing in button, for example, and you'll see all the button elements. Next is templates. Here you have two tabs. First is my templates, where you can save any of your layouts as a template to reuse later. Or you can go to the template library, which has pre-made templates that you can use and adjust on your page. There are section templates as well as full page templates. To preview any of the templates, click on this button. If you want to add any of these templates to the page, click on either the download button here or click on the download icon for any template. Once the template is downloaded, exit the template library and you can add it to the page by clicking on it here. These are the usual undo redo buttons. Next is the WP Bakery built-in SEO tool, which allows you to optimize your site's SEO performance straight from the editor. In the general tab, you can adjust how your page will look in the search engine results by writing the focus key phrase, title and slot in description. The content analysis tab will give you suggestions about what to adjust to improve your site's SEO performance. And the social tab allows you to adjust how this site will look when shared on social media. Next, we have the page settings. Here you can adjust the page title, change the layout from default to blank and vice versa. Next, you can add custom CSS and JavaScript. This little AI button here is the WP Bakery AI tool that is available for all text elements in WP Bakery as well as here in the page settings. For all text elements, you're able to generate new content by writing a prompt, choosing the tone of voice, length, keywords. You can also improve existing content and translate. Here, next to custom CSS and JS, you'll be able to generate custom code by writing a prompt. For example, underline all H1 headings on the page and then insert the code. This is the responsive view, which allows you to see how your page will look on different devices. Save draft and publish buttons. And finally, the option to view page and switch to the backend editor or exit the editor. Okay, now let's move on to creating a layout. 
the basic structure of any WP Bakery layout will consist of rows, columns, and elements. A row is the main container that you will split into columns and then add elements to these columns. You can adjust each of these components separately. To add a row to a page, click on the Add Element button and click on the Row element. You'll see its controls in the color blue here at the top. Here are the general row settings, which allow you to add things like the row stretch, which means how far the content will stretch. Will it be full width or is it going to be boxed in with some spaces on the sides? Then you can adjust the column gap, choose if the row is going to be full height, if the columns will be equal height, you can change the content position inside the row to top, middle, or bottom. You can use video as a background of this row, add a parallax effect, add CSS animation, and a row ID and extra class name for custom code if you want to write custom code. And you can disable the row as well. And it's important to know that all changes you make are applied automatically and you can see them on the page instantly. Next tab is the design options that are available for every single element in WP Bakery. Here you can add a margin, border or padding to the element, choose border color, style and radius, choose background color and image. If you check simplify controls, that will apply the same value on all sides. Next are the row layout options, and here you can choose between any of the predefined row layouts, which basically just means how many columns the row will be split into and the size of those columns. You could also enter a custom value for your row. Let's choose one of the predefined options and look at the column controls. You'll see the column controls in yellow next to the row controls. Again, if you click on the edit button, you'll be able to adjust the column general settings like a video button for the column, parallax, CSS effect, and element ID and extra class name, which you can add to every element in WP Bakery. Next are the same design options, and for columns, you can adjust the responsive settings. A reminder that you can customize each column separately. For example, if you want the columns to be different colors, you would go to the design options for each column and just change the background color for the specific column. Next, to add an element to a column, you can either click on this plus icon if the column is empty, or this little icon and click on the element you want to add. Or click on the plus icon in the navigation bar. If you add an element through the column, it will be added inside that column. But if you do it through the nav bar, it will add an element at the bottom of the page. And if you click the little plus icon in the column that already has an element in it, it will add the new element under the previous one in the same column. Once you add any element, the element edit window will open automatically, and that's where you'll be able to adjust the parameters of that specific element. For the text block, you have the option to add and style text. A reminder that WP Bakery AI is available here to generate text, translate, or improve the text. If you've styled an element in a certain way and you want to reuse that element, you can click on this gear icon at the top and save it as a custom element. This is very helpful for buttons, for example. Style the button once, save as an element, and then add to the page with the same styling. You'll find your custom elements in the Add Element window in the My Elements tab. The parameters you can adjust will be different for each element, so you can just browse through the elements and see what you can customize for each. You can also clone any element as well as copy and paste inside a column. You can also move all elements, columns, and rows around the layout when you hover over their controls and you'll see this moving icon. Hold it and drag and drop to the desired area. To delete elements from the page, simply click on the X icon. 
Another useful feature is the copy paste feature that allows you to copy and paste elements across different pages on your site and even between different installations. To copy and paste between different pages within the same site, simply copy the element and paste it in a column on the other page the same way as you would if it was the same page. If you want to copy and paste between different WordPress sites, copy the element as usual and paste on the other site using Ctrl-V or Command-V for Mac users. This will add the new row at the bottom of the existing content. And a reminder here, you need WP Bakery to be installed and activated on both sites. Now let me show you how to actually put this knowledge into action. Let me recreate this uh, hero section right here. So the first trick that I'm gonna teach you in the demo is that these are actually two rows that are inside a section element. Let's add it to the page and add that dog background to it. So the dog background would be the background of both rows. Here it is. And remember about row stretch, same with section stretch. Let's stretch the section, but the content will stay boxed in. And as you can see here, it made us a little weird repeat here. So let's put cover. Okay, let's move on to adding our first row uh, here. Let's change the layout structure to this one. And let's add our logo. That is going to be a single image element. You add an image here by clicking the plus icon. And I have my logo right here. By default, it will have thumbnail size, but it's good practice to put it full size. So upload an image in the size that you actually want to see it on the page. Okay, next, let's add that button. And change the text, join now. Here you can uh, change the style of the button and uh, the shape as well. We wanted it rounded, rounded edges here, and we'll make it classic green. You can change the size as well, alignment. Let's align it in the center of the column. This is the column. And now we have the option to set the button full width. So that will make it a little bit bigger and uh, make it stand out. What we're going to do now, we are going to save this button because we are going to reuse it later in the layout as well. Join button and save. Okay, now we can move on to the next row, which is going to have the text and the button. Let's add another row right here and we're gonna position it right here. Now let's add a text block with our main title of this uh, hypothetical page. So this is the first opportunity to use WP Bakery AI. You can ask it to create new content and you can ask, write a page title for a landing page for a business called positive steps. It's a, a dog training service. So let's leave it as a title, keywords. Let's just let it do its magic. All right. And this is what it came up with. We can just copy it. We can insert it into our page. And uh, let's say it's a little too long. Let's use unleash your dog's full potential. For example, let's make this an H1. Change the color to, let me steal the color from the logo and make our text that color. Okay, now let's add to this same column. Let's add our element. As you remember, it's here under my elements. 
Okay, this time we don't want it to be full width. And we can move it down here. Okay, it's a little bit smushed at the moment. So what we can do now is what we learned before. And those are the design options. Let's add some padding to this row. Let's say 100 at the top, 100 at the bottom. And already so much better. You can also adjust the padding for every single element. So we can also give uh, the button a little bit of a space to breathe. Oh, now, now that there's a little bit more space here, you can see that these are not really aligning. So there's a setting to make them in one line, and that would be content position in the row. Now it's default, so it's at the top, but we make it middle. And now our button and our logo are both on the same line here. That's how you would do it. The next step I would do would be checking the SEO. We can start writing a key phrase, which now would probably be positive steps, which is the name of the company. Um, now we can write also the title that's going to show up in the search results. Positive steps, dog, dog training here. You can uh, change this log. which would be this thing right here. And you can ask AI to generate your meta description. Uh, positive steps. Company. Let's just go for it. And insert. And now that's what's going to show up. Always check con content analysis. Now WP Bakery SEO is telling us that there's not enough text on the page, but this was just the first part of the page. So you would obviously just keep going. Um, no internal links, no outbound links. So just check what's here. And by following these suggestions, you can really help your site be more visible in search engines. And that's how you would do it. Okay, now you should know everything you need to know to start working with the WP Bakery page builder. Check out our channel if you're looking for more in-depth tutorials about specific features. And I'll see you there. Bye.